Hello. And welcome to week five of the Losing to Funny Reasons um, series, otherwise known as the SCDA Premier Ball White Division. I'm never going to be able to say it all in one smooth take, I swear. Uh, we are one in four, although it sounds bad. There are two games, one that came down to our own sand and one that came down to two 90% misses that could have definitely turned into wins. Um, so we very easily could be 3-2 in this position. So I would say I'm not like throwing, you know, I'm not just throwing away the games. I am giving it a decent effort. Uh, just, you know, sometimes that's how it goes. Sometimes you get unlucky. Sometimes people are better than you, you know, I've, I've been swamped completely for two weeks and, you know, there's nothing I could have done at my current skill level to really deal with those. But besides that, that's not going to stop us from trying to win these last games. I don't want to give anybody a free win. Um, we're going to give people a challenge. And our opponent today is definitely going to be a challenge for us. He has, in my mind, an incredible team. It looks even better as like a singles team, to be honest with you. But I do also like it as a doubles team. Uh, we're seeing a, uh, an old nemesis come back in the form of Politoed, uh, our opponent that we played week two that beat us. Um, they dropped out of the league afterwards, or maybe a couple weeks after. I don't exactly remember when. Um, and pretty much the person that took over for them dumped their whole team. So somebody picked up Polytoad. So we've got to deal with it again. So may end up being Specs again. I think this team is actually pretty strong in rain. We've got quite a few things to deal with. Um, between Tornadus spamming Bleak Wind Storms and hurricanes like it could be an offensive set pretty easily it could also run heat wave although that would get weakened by the rain fire is good extra coverage into our team he's got icy wind he's obviously got prankster tailwind an amazing support pokemon can also run taunt um so we're gonna have to work around that the polytoad obviously could be specs but also it could just be a supportive damp rock or you know like a citrus very bulky set can run things like encore hypnosis perish song i believe if it didn't lose that so yeah, definitely got to watch out for that. His third Mon is honestly the one I'm most concerned about because I'm not bringing Koma O once again. He's got the King Gambit. Uh, obviously a absolute menace in singles, but it has a place in doubles as well with the Defiant. I can't reliably put any stat drops on it. And also it's immune to my Prankster Mon in Clef Key because it is a dark type. So I can't just paralyze it and ignore it or, you know, hit it with any kind of status moves off of Clef Key. So that makes it kind of tough. Uh, he's got the Torterra. Uh, honestly, pretty good this generation. It's got the really strong ground moves if it wants to spam those. But um, it also has the ability to shell smash. But it could also run like an iron defense set with the shell armor so it can't get crit. And then it's just impossible for me to KO. Um, so you really got to be careful around anything like that. And beside it, uh, funnily enough, is a follow me Pokemon. Uh, it's, I think, the lowest rated follow me Pokemon from the DLC. It's Furret. Uh, obviously not a incredibly threatening Pokemon. Its stats are pretty mediocre, but it does have the follow me. It also now gets access to tidy up. So it can essentially dragon dance and clear hazards and substitutes off the field. So I don't know that it would ever want to run the tidy up set, but it is an option for my opponent. Mainly I think if it comes, it's going to be very bulky follow me and just be as annoying as possible letting a partner set up, whether it be a sword stance, King Gambit or something else. Arcanine is super threatening. Obviously, Hisuian Arcanine is amazing in normal VGC. Uh, it definitely threatens a lot of things with Choice Banded, Flare Blitz, Head Smashes, Extreme Speeds, Wild Charge, you know, very strong moves. It may not even run Intimidate versus me. My team is not exactly the most physical attacker centric, so I could see it running something like a Bandit or Scarf Rock headset so that it doesn't take its own recoil. Uh, so, yeah. Very threatening. Could also run Supportive Intimidate, though. Has Will-O-Wisp. Has uh, some options available to it there. He's got the Yonmega. Kind of self-sets up with Speed Boost. I actually have no clue if it gets any extra things for doubles. I know its single set is either Speed Boost with, like, Life Orb. Um, and it runs Bug Buzz, Air Slash. Uh, you know, some form of coverage. I know Terra has helped it in some ways. Um, and I know that it also gets Tinted Lens Choice Specs. So... What is your resist? <laughs> is it, which we do have Clef Key, which quad resists bug, so it would have to click flying type moves versus me. And we've got pretty good answers to deal with Yon Mega with a lot of rock type coverage, so I don't know that I expect it, but if it shows up, we can deal with it. 
He's got Wordier as his second Intimidator. Uh, also a Trick Room Setter, a normal Psychic type. Got a lot of coverage, a lot of support it could run. I know Bulldo's weakness policy is definitely an option for King Gambit if it wanted to run that. Um, I don't know if that shows up, <laughs> but it is an option to my opponent. Uh, and generally, sort of bulky, Intimidate helps it, but its defenses aren't really what you'd think it would be. It's got the Fortress. It was just a very cheap pickup. Um, I don't really know what it does in doubles. Obviously, it's only weak to fire. We are luckily bringing some fire coverage, so that should help uh, us deal with it if it does show up, but I don't know that I anticipate it. Could do something in Trick Room with Wordier, but I don't know. And finally, he's got the Haunter. Kind of budget Gengar, also very cheap. Uh, really strong special attacker with his dual stab. Shadow Ball Sludge Bombs, get Focus Blast, Thunderbolt, Energy Ball. Uh, can run like a Trick Scarf set if it wanted to. Can run Eviolite as well. Uh, but really likes choice items or a Focus Sash usually. Um, so pretty strong. Although its dual stab is completely walled out by Como O. So I don't know if I expect it to show up either. Uh, looking at what we've got this week. Uh, you're going to see some usual suspects. I tried to make the team interesting, but I also thought that some of the things we brought more often are some of the best sets for my opponent. But the first one is at least a little bit different than usual. We've got an offensive Persian, but this time we're running the Assault Vest, which I think is a pretty sick add-on. It makes it so that we pretty much always live two Bleak Wind Storms from Thunderous. Uh, we always live some other special attacks from like Choice Specs Politoed. So it kind of works as a pseudo focus sash without us having to run a sash and helping us take more hits from the special side. Uh, I don't know that we take a bug buzz from Yon Mega, probably not, but who knows, maybe it helps. Um, we got the fake out, helps Dagger's team and help us get set up on our side. Snarl is really good stab coverage into his team. We just can't click it into King Gambit, but if we see two special attackers out on the field, it's pretty huge. We got Burning Jealousy. I really like fire coverage this week. Um, I think it's really strong to King Gambit, Torterra, Yonmega, and Fortress. So just having fire coverage on the team somewhere is super nice. I know he has the rain, but it still does a chunk of damage. And if he boosts before we use it somehow, like if he's under Tailwind and Swords Dances with King Gambit, we get a burn on it. So that's kind of sick. And finally, we have Thunderbolt. It's just good neutral coverage for his team. It hits Tornadus, Politoed, Yonmega as well uh, for super effective. Uh, it lets us threaten them a little more easily. And then we've got Moltres, uh, and this is where the Focus Sash is this week. This is super simple, max special attack, max speed. Uh, Focus Sash just helps us if he's Tailwind plus something with rock coverage. Maybe he leads Tornadus Arcanine and rock slides immediately. Um, we can live it with the Focus Sash, so we don't have to worry about that. We don't have to worry about Choice Scarfed Arcanine, and at least to an extent this helps us deal with that speed tie. Uh, we've got the Hurricane, because if he brings the rain, suddenly we can't miss. And honestly, if we're going to miss 90%, so we might as well commit all the way and start running super inaccurate moves, because maybe they're where the accuracy is hiding. We've got Heat Wave, good spread damage, hit us around for it, so that something like King Gambit isn't setting up as easily. And then we've got the Ancient Power. I was going to run Terra Blast Rock or Terra Blast Ground, or even Terra Blast Water I had considered. But I kind of just like Ancient Power, because once again, if we're playing with 10% a lot, maybe we get an Omni Boost. Um, but in all seriousness, it's really good coverage into Yon Mega. It hurts Arcanine quite a bit, and it hurts Tornadus quite a bit. And with Terra, it hurts even more, because we get a uh, stab on it. We've got Tailwind as well, so uh, that way we can counter Tornadus' Tailwind. Uh, look at this beautiful picture of Mila on the side. Uh, we've got Choice Scarf Tyranitar. We are bringing the sand, so if we did kill our own Moltres after it gets knocked down to Sash, so be it. Uh, because I think sand's pretty important to help us deal with the uh, Weather War. We've got Choice Scarf. We're outrunning everything on his team, not under Tailwind and not boosted. Uh, low Kick, really solid coverage into King Gambit as well as the Arcanine. It really doesn't do much to Furret, though. I think it's only 60 base power, so we're better off clicking other things if Furret's on the field. Rock Slide, obviously, one of the best moves in VGC. We got Knock Off to help us deal with things like the Weird Deer, but it can also do a nice chunk of damage to things like Tornadus. And then we've also got Thunder Punch. So once again, Electric Coverage looks really strong into his team. His only immunity is Torterra, and he really doesn't like taking repeated Electric hits. So Choice uh, Scarf's Terra Electric Thunder Punch is pretty solid. We've got the Life Orb Duck Trio. Uh, Sand Force once again, so we're double boosting with Sand Force Life Orb. 
Rock Slide is very spammable. Stomping Tantrum's our single target ground move. We've got Earthquake is a spread ground move if either Moltres is on the field or we can tear a Clef Key. And then Terra Blast Fire just gives us something to, well, hit King Gambit pretty well, but also helps us deal with Fortress, Yon Mega, uh, things like that. And Torterra, because Torterra kind of just completely walls us if we don't Terra, so it's nice to have that. Sinistra, honestly, there's not a better set to run. I wish I could be more creative with this guy, but max HP, max defense, a little bit everywhere else. With Matcha Gacha, Shadow Ball, and Calm Mind, it's just a, it's such a good set. Like, it sets up on its own with Terra, Water. Like, what does he really have that can hit me? Like, he's got Grass Moves on Torterra, and then Terra uh, Stab Moves. And that's it. So, I think Sinish just really good in this matchup. I also threw Iron Defense on this week. If we lead it beside Clef Key or Persian, we can immediately start setting up on both sides and just make this thing an unkillable nightmare for my opponent. The only thing it really doesn't do damage to is the uh, King Gambit. So we don't want Sinistra and Clef Key on the field at the same time as King Gambit because they both are kind of walled by it. Um, but the, our other four should scare it off pretty well. And then finally, we've got a pretty standard Clef Key. We've got the dual screens just to help slow down its damage and help us get big hits off with things like our Sand Core, our Speedy Core, and then our Sinistra. Foul play I like this week because he has a lot of Pokemon that like to boost their physical attack in some way. And fairy coverage, you know, it wasn't that meaningful. He actually has zero fairy weaknesses and zero steel weaknesses, so it's kind of awkward. But uh, Dark is pretty good into his team outside of King Gambit. And then, you know, we're going to slap Thunder Wave on. We're going to let Clefkey try to redeem itself. And based on the other moves, I thought about Steel Beam to knock ourselves out so that King Gambit doesn't set up for free. Also considered Sunny Day to help us with the Weather War, but then we're just boosting Arcanine. So we have a similar situation as before. But yeah, that's the team, and we'll be into the battle shortly. Alright, and we're back. And I figured out the rule set, I swear. Uh, I didn't just guess and hope that it's right. Um, so we have our opponent's Terra types real quick. So we see that he has... Tornadus is Steel. Weird ear is normal. Oh, so he brought the weird ear and it's a normal type. That's cool. Uh, wait, torn tort. Oh, <laughs> Torterra is a fairy type. Fur it is a ghost. Polytoad is a dragon. Yo, that's kind of sick. And Arcanine is Fairy. Okay, so that's pretty standard. Uh, I feel like it's going to be that setup Torterra that's just super bulky. So if we get rid of the Mons on the sheet real quick, I did not bring Coma O. Probably for good reason. I did not bring Slowking. I did not bring Muck or Lorantis. My opponent did not bring King Gambit, which I cannot be more thankful for. No Yon Mega, no Fortress or Haunter. Uh, so no King Gambit is great news, but those Terra types scare me. Uh, so he's got Furret at the top of his list. So I think it's a follow me Furret um, that avoids Fake Out. So he's trying to dodge Fake Out, maybe to help him set up Tailwind turn one. Um, tough. I could lead Moltres. Uh, it always lives. One hit. I think for game one, we go Moltres and Persian in the front, and we go our Sand team in the back. That's kind of the plan I had. We've got Klefki and Sinistra for game two. Uh, Sinistra's really nice to help us beat the Torterra. So we'll see how this goes. I actually don't know that Dugtrio is the right play. I might have wanted to replace it for Sinistra in this first battle. But Dugtrio hasn't got to see a lot of gameplay and I really want to use it, honestly. I like it a lot. So here we go, game one. Maybe we can get our second win. So Torterra, Tornadus is the lead. Fairy and Steel type Terras are on the table. Torterra can definitely go for a Rock type move here. It could taunt me. Um. A heat wave should do a decent amount to both. Uh, it could get taunted, so I definitely don't want to tell in. Neither of these are a fairy, and neither are immune to fake out, so I can 
I do have my choice of who to fake out. I think if Torterra doesn't Terrastalize here, it probably wants to switch or protect, so I will fake out the Tornadus. We'll see if it's Covert Cloak as well. Do get the fake out. Is it Covert? It is Covert Cloak. Okay, good to know. Torterra's Rock Blast. Oh, man. <laughs> So my focus sash just doesn't matter. Wow. Okay. That's brutal. So it is Rock Blast. It hit me three times. So there's a small chance that it's loaded dice based off that. So both are faster now. Does Sorterra get a fighting type move? I didn't even think to double check that. Uh, it may got body press nowadays. I'm not sure. I mean, we bring in Titar. That's crazy. I got completely destroyed off of turn one once again. So, I'd love to see that. Um, Tyranitar. Custom set into Torterra. I mean, we're not really doing much to him. Earthquake's not doing that much to us, though. It might be high horsepower. Um, we can confirm the item. I could also just rock slide. Uh, I think I go for the burning jealousy into Torterra, as weird as that is. Get some kind of damage on it. We just need to get rid of the Torterra, I think. So we'll knock it off. And I guess go for a burning jealousy. Oh, it, it hits both. <laughs> Things I should have probably figured out before this. This is just showing all my VGC, like, misknowledge. Arcanine is the switch in. We'll probably Intimidate? Yeah, okay, so it is Intimidate. So we learned a little more. Headlong Rush. And it does one-shot us. Okay, so it's a super offensive tort, which I did not prep for at all. I did not really anticipate it. You go for the Burning Jealousy. It got its stats lowered. That does like half. That's kind of sick. Um, unfortunately, we don't get a burn out of it. We do hurt ourselves with sand, and now we have Doug Trio, which just gets headlong rushed into oblivion because I didn't think to put protect as the last move on it because originally it was gonna be choice band, and I kind of switched it up last second. Not that it does much here anyway, but you know we get Terra Persian here, try to KO the Tort at least. Then we'll just rock slide. Terra Fire, Burning Jealousy. It doesn't matter. We got completely outplayed in turn one. Once again, the Covert Cloak blocking Fake Out just absolutely destroyed us. But that does mean we can run Choice Scarf T-Tar up front, game two, and maybe KO the Tornadus, or at least do a lot of damage to it. I see. So he goes for his Terra as well. Um, Fairy Arcanine. Probably Terra Blast into Persian, so the Fire Terra is actually kind of clutch here. It's not going to make a big difference, it's just going to help our differential by one. Um, yeah, it's tough. You know, I did not prep well. Once again, doubles is really kicking my ass lately. Like, I don't, I don't know what to say at this point. Views have gone way down too, so I totally understandably, so I'm not too concerned. So it does Terra Blast into Persian, so I do one thing right. Uh, if not accidentally. It still does a huge chunk of damage. That is strong. Life Orb, okay. So not banned. Ducturio does get knocked out as well. So Torterra just obliterates my whole team. I had no chance. Uh, so Arcanine is... Life Orb with Terra Blast. We do KO Torterra thanks to the Headlong Rush drop and the Terrasalization. Either would have been enough. We got both. Arcanine is faster under Tailwind, of course. And Politoed was his last for this game. And it is Drizzle, as we would expect. We don't want to show off any additional moves, I don't think. I obviously, Snarl here would be useful um 
and Thunderbolt would do a chunk to Politoed. We could see kind of what the Politoed set is if we went for a Thunderbolt. Um, bulky Politoed takes like a little less than half. You know what? I'll go for it because I'll be honest. I don't know if Persian's coming to game two. So we'll go ahead and give him a little info. Oh, never mind. He just rock slides me. Okay, cool. Uh, does hit it. Does land a 90% accurate move. So congratulations. Uh, huge accomplishment there. And we lose game one. Honestly, Ducktrio, not to play. <laughs> These Covert Cloak Tailwinders are just brutal. Um, my only way to really stop them is Fake Out. I guess, no, Taunt wouldn't work because I'm um, not used to having Persian over Grimmsnarl. So a Prankster Taunt is not going to do it. Which, in that, in this case, you know, Tornadus is faster anyway. So Tornadus is just massive at being able to set up that Tailwind instantly. And then Torterra, obviously absolutely blowing back our entire team you know like ground and rock coverage just completely destroyed me there uh i wonder if it has what it has for sinistra because it only showed headlong rush and rock blast so i wonder what the play is versus sinistra because i i'm kind of leaning toward going slow mode here um, because if he wants to just set up Tailwind and go crazy, then we can just start setting up with Sinistra instantly. Uh, obviously if we Terrasilize with Sinistra, then we're weak to, like, a Wood Hammer. Um, but if we don't Terrasilize, we're weak to, like, a uh, Flying-type move from Torn. So we're gonna have to play around that a bit. Um, it's tough. We can assume maybe he leads the same thing, since that went so well for him the first time. Leading Sinistra also, once again, makes my ability completely useless, which is just frustrating. But I do want to get it set up as soon as possible. We could lead Tyranitar beside it. I think Klefki is the best support mon we have. Rock Blast completely <laughs> destroyed Moltres. If it had been Rock Slide or Stone Edge, like I kind of hoped, um, we would have eaten the hit and hit him back with a huge heat wave. I don't think it would have knocked him out, but it would have done obviously a big chunk of damage. Um, but Rock Blast just completely cancels out any chance of that. Scarf Titar can do something as long as Tailwind's not up, but if Tailwind's up, then it's not great. I could actually lead Persian. Mm, I was going to say and fake out um, the Pokemon opposing Tornadus to help Sinistra get set up, but then what do I do the next turn? Hmm, tough. I'm really not good at this. <laughs> so we bring Moltres. Persian in the back could be useful, I guess. Help us pivot in a fake out if we need. Yeah, we'll do that. Leave sand on the bench. And game two, good luck. Uh, don't beat me as quickly. <laughs> it's still fun. I, I really just enjoy playing the game, honestly. I, I'm sorry. I know watching losses so often, it's not very entertaining content at all um so i'll at least try to make it interesting he does lead the exact same two we lead our sinistra klefki combo now does he have coverage for sinistra because i would think he would want to try to headlong rush klefki here but he knows i could rage powder so what i think i can do hmm hard because obviously tornadus can just bleak wind here as well or hurricane i think i will terrasilize and go for an iron defense instantly and then also go for a light screen to kind of dampen anything the tornadus wants to do all right tornadus switches instantly which is nice and in comes polytoad so our terrestrialization is looking pretty solid here. Obviously his flying type moves are accurate now. So he will land that, but that's why I clicked light screen. So once again, we see the Politoed, we see the Torn, and we see the Torterra. So Furret and Weird Ear might not make an appearance again. Not too surprising. We do Terra Water on Pol uh, Sinistra. And we do get a light screen up. So even if he goes for Bleak Wind here, we're taking not too much damage. Does bleak wind. Uh, that's a fair amount, unfortunately. And iron defense is really not meaning much here with Torterra um, gone. 
I think Politoed's pretty likely to go for a defensive Terra here, so Machigachi isn't super effective anymore. But I do think I want to go for it regardless. And then I could set a Reflect, but I could also just Paralyze one of these two, assuming we land it. Dragon Steel, so we can Paralyze either. Um, actually, if I Paralyze Tornadus, I should be faster with Sinistra. So that could prove useful. Calm Mind would have been nice, turn one, I guess. It would have been better, but I was just worried the Torterra would go for a big hit instantly. Okay, Helping Hand this turn. Uh... More of a supportive set. We do actually land the Thunder Wave this time. And we should get a Macha Gacha here. Should be faster. Okay, we are. We do miss something. The thing we would have healed off of. <laughs> oh. What do, what do I say? What do I say at this point? I'd say I don't recommend this team. If you wanted to run this on something else, I wouldn't recommend it at all. We get our Citrus back, so we can definitely take like two more. I do kind of want to go for a Thunder Wave onto the Politoed. Maybe actually a Calm Mind here so that we're not taking as much damage. And so that we can play Yellow Magic, you know. That's kind of what we're leaning on at this point. He mod Helping Hand and uh, Bleak Wind again. It looks like he's going to attack with both this turn, or do something else with Politoed. We will paralyze it. Uh, we do get our Calm Mind set up, so we'll take significantly less damage, and we can just use Macha Gacha pretty much non-stop from here on out. We see Bleak Win once again. Okay, knocks us back where we were, about 50 damage. And a Muddy Water, so... Hits both, doesn't do much. And doesn't lower our accuracy, which is probably the best part. So we'll Macha Gacha. Um, I mean, at this point, a Reflect helps us later on in the game. A Foul Play would help us chip some things down, but I really don't think it's that valuable. So we'll just set it. You know, it's going to help Sinistra later in the game. At this point, Leftovers would have been the better play. Okay, so Tornadus gets fully paralyzed. Makes me think it was going for Tailwind there. And maybe Politoed had something to hit Sinistra for more damage than Muddy Water. We do actually hit this time, and we see that it is a two-shot pretty cleanly on Politoed. So we should get a good amount of health back here. That's off Tornadus. <laughs> and... Nice. Back to 124. Okay. Back from the brink a little bit. Politoed gets fully paired. So we see a double full pair this turn. I am sorry about that. That is unfortunate. Uh, I think my best play is to just Macha Gacha again. What's in the back? Moltres and Persian. Honestly, I could switch into Persian here kind of freely. Klefki could set back up later or paralyze something later. So getting our AV Mon in against two special attackers could be pretty useful. We threaten a fake out on the Politoed. Okay, so Politoed switches. So is it Arcanine again? It's Torterra coming back in. Okay. Does he have a grass type move is the new question. Double full para. I am really sorry about that. No one deserves three paras in a row. But we miss again on the Torterra to kind of make up for it. So could have been worse. Or could have been better for me or better for my opponent. Both of us dealing with a little bit of luck. So it looks like um, Tornadus lives maybe two more. And Rain does end here. Yeah, probably two if not three more. So we'll just Macha Gacha again. Best move I got. And I will fake out the Torterra. Not let it do any kind of really big hits. Okay, it has Protect. So it only has one coverage move left in the back. Fig out hits into the Protect. And we see Tornadus. Does it go first? It goes for Tailwind to help the Torterra get nice and fast. We do have Reflect and Iron Defense up. So even a big Grass type move shouldn't do much. Hit the Protect with the Macha Gacha. And Tornadus. The next one might KO. It's going to be close. We can assume Torterra is probably faster than Persian at this point, although it's not guaranteed. I think Macha Gacha, you know, we're just keeping ourselves alive. Snarl could help us knock out the Tornadus. Does decent damage to Torterra. We also have Burning Jealousy. 
uh, Torterra's a fairy Terra, so its last move might be the fairy Terra Blast. I think Burning Jealousy is pretty safe here, honestly, uh, because it helps us get that KO on Tornadus, as well as big damage on the um, Torterra. Hmm, I do like Snarl in case a special tiger comes in, but I will go for the Burning Jealousy. So last move is Bullet Seed, but yeah, Iron Defense plus Reflect means it's not doing much. So it pretty much confirms Loaded Dice. So it will hit one more time. Pretty big damage. Tornadus is once again faster than Sinistra, so it can go for a Bleak Wind here. Oh, okay, Persian's faster. Burning Jealousy does knock Torn out, so if we do land this Macha, it is Seagull Target, which is nice. We crit the Torn, I uh, don't know if it mattered. This max special attack Persian. And we do land the Macha Gacha, which is pretty sick. Um, at this point, I don't know what to expect. And wow, that is big damage for just plus one. So we get back to full, which is kind of cool. Oh, and we burn it. Yo, uh, that's a little bit of good fortune in our favor. <laughs> uh, it looks like you can live one more after the burn. And Arcanine is his last. If it has Wild Charge, it's an issue. Otherwise, I think we can deal with it. He does have Tailwind, so it does outspeed Persian, which is not great. Persian is really nice to have. Uh, how many turns of screens do we have left? We've got... Oh, my face is in the way. One turn of light screen left, so I don't want to switch Klefki in here, because I'd like to get that light screen back up. Um, honestly, I could hit around the Torterra, but I, I do like the healing, so this is the Macha Gacha Simulator. Um, Snarl would be nice. Could also switch in... No, we don't really want to switch in Moltres here. Um, Snarl's our best damage into the Arcanine, so I think that's going to be our play. He does have Rock Slide, so playing for flinches, which is totally understandable. And that might be his best damaging move. It has Rock Blast to hit Persian, that's not going to KO me. Ever. I'm not even Fur Coat, I just thought of that. And that's doing very minimal damage behind the Reflect. And the Burn, obviously. Cutting its damage way down. We do miss uh, Torterra, which is fine. Uh, it does okay damage to Arcanine. I kind of would hope for a little more. I feel like that's got some bulk investment. And then we do actually hit both with the Macha Gacha. Wow, that is big damage to Arcanine. That'll definitely get us back to full. So missing the Torterra there really didn't matter one way or another because we didn't end up knocking it out before it could do anything, but it doesn't really matter. Our light screen does wear off, and Politoed comes in. Hmm. So what is the play now? I think just spam Macha Gacha, right? Like, light screen is gone, so Politoed can do a little damage to us, but if it doesn't have coverage, it doesn't have coverage. So we will Macha Gacha again. How much Tailwind do you have left? One turn of Tailwind. I have no Protect, a complete oversight on my part. If I could get a Snarl on Politoed, that would be nice. Arcanine could just knock me out. We will try. Oh, and he forfeits, so I don't know how the KOs funnel out there. Hmm. I didn't actually know he could forfeit or I would have been doing that <laughs> before now. Oops. Oh, what is this? Oh, he, my opponent sent the uh, matchup. Okay. So we know he's definitely going to prep better for um, Poltegeist, or Sinistra, sorry. I don't know why I keep wanting to call it uh, Poltegeist. We know he's definitely going to prep a lot for it going into this battle. Because that was like our only <laughs> win condition going into that. So I think what we can do here is lead with something more offensive. And have the Sinistra in the back ready to set up, hoping we can take advantage of a different lead. Obviously, Furret's not really going to help him against Sinistra, so I don't really know what his counterplay to it is. I will definitely lead Klefki again. I kind of want to lead... I mean, obviously leading Moltres is not good here, because Rock Blast is just going to absolutely obliterate me. Leading Titar is a decent option. Um, although a Tailwind Headlong Rush just immediately deletes it and doesn't really get me much out of it. Once again, Persian, I think could help slow him down. Let me get both screens up. We have Sinistra in the back. And then from there, who do I think could round out the game? 
The Sash on Moltres is so good into everything except the Torterra. Um, and our coverage on it's just pretty solid in general. But the Scarf Tyranitar, I think it'd also be nice to get rid of his weather if we really needed to. He re is really adamant about getting Tailwind up though, which kind of just nullifies our Scarf, and then we don't have much bulk. So I don't know if that's actually that good. Plus the Intimidate from Arcanine. Mm. I don't think there's really a great fourth out of these three. I think all of them are kind of flops at the end of the day. Um, I think I will go Moltres though. Thinking about it, the freedom of moves and the Sash outside of Torterra, I think could benefit us more. So, let's see. Game three. We made it to game three once again. So, uh, not bad. Let's see what his adjustment is for the Sinistra. Looks like no lead adjustment, which is fine with me. Uh, we have a clear lead adjustment. So, I think maybe turn one here, he might have wanted to go more aggressive if I had led the Sinistra. Um, I think Light Screen once again... Actually, the Torterra is more of a threat here. So I will reflect. Well, I can fake out, actually. So I definitely want a light screen in case the Tornadus attacks turn one, and I do want to fake out the Torterra. If he does protect and Tailwind, then I can get screens up. And he's really thinking about this move. So obviously I've clicked fake out with Persian every time it's been in, so why would I stop now? <laughs> Yeah, he does protect. So I could have went for a Snarl or a Burning Jealousy there to help mitigate uh, Tornadus' damage. But I think this play's fine. I think it covers our options a lot better. And I really didn't want Clefki to get KO'd turn 1 because I set up a Light Screen. So he does Tailwind. So now we have to deal with a lot of speed on his side. What I could do is actually switch Clefki into Moltres and then into Sinistra over the next few turns. I don't know if that's my best play, though. <laughs> Reflect is definitely our play this turn, along with a Burning Jealousy, I think. Snarl into Tornadus would also be nice. Torterra is not that big of a threat. Um, but we don't have Iron Defense up immediately this time. So it's going to be doing double damage, so like 35-40%. I think I'd rather Tornadus be weak than Torterra be lower health, though. And plus, Politoed definitely has a chance of switching in here uh, to guarantee the accuracy on Bleak Wind. So Snarl would be nice for that. Oh, but it's actually Tornado switching out. So Jealousy definitely was the better play. Yeah, into Arcanine. Okay. So Arcanine plus Torterra really do threaten uh, Sinistra in both forms, either in or out of Terra. We got our Reflect up, which is nice. So we've got our screens. Uh, we do see a headlong into Klefki. I do think I always live. Yeah, nice. I did EV it correctly. Torterra does lose its defenses. And Snarl comes out. The Burning Jealousy would have been really nice there, honestly. I can go for that this turn, though. And with Klefki, I can just try to paralyze the Arcanine. Because if he protects Arcanine and Torterra KOs Klefki then Burning Jealousy KOs Torterra, which is a good for us, net good for us. And slowing down an Arcanine is just a positive as well, because then it speed ties with uh, Moltres in the end game if he gets Tailwind up again. So we'll Burning Jealousy, because it will guarantee KO Torterra. This uh, Persian is a problem for my opponent. If we were Furco, we'd be in such good shape right here. Technician has not really come into play at all. Um, it didn't make that Snarl do more damage, but at the end of the day, I don't know if that damage was really meaningful. So we'll see. Uh, we do actually land all of our Thunder Waves so far. Kind of insane. Uh, so Persian will go next after the Torterra. Headlong Rush will hit into Persian. It does huge damage. Like, incredible damage. And we will get a Burning Jealousy. Which is such a cool move. I wish it was more applicable to more situations. Because I really like the idea of it. It just never really... It's not that good. <laughs> Obviously, I didn't know much about it either, because I didn't even know that it was a uh, dual target. So he rock slides, it knocks out Persian, but it actually doesn't KO Klefki, and I don't know if that's a good thing or not, <laughs> because I kind of would have liked Klefki to be out here. Um, obviously, I can bring in Sinistra. It'll heal Klefki some. I could bring out Moltres, but then we're playing that fun game with uh, Tailwind and Speed Ties. 
So I think, uh, okay, Tornadus comes in. We get in Sinistra. Our play here is obvious, but I think we gotta make it. We do heal Klepki, so we do get to see Hospitality actually do something. I don't think it'll really matter unless uh, he just completely ignores it. Although, we might actually live a Rock Slide plus a uh, Bleak Wind now. So we'll go for a Thunder Wave into the Tornadus. I will Terra 100%. 1000%. Have to Terra. And... It really depends on what its last Mon is. But I think us doing more damage in general is just nice. So we'll just go for a Calm Mind. Because Rock Slide is not doing that much behind Reflect. We're going to resist the Flare Blitz. Oh gosh, screen shake. <laughs> We're going to resist Flare Blitz now. If he's Wild Charge, he's Wild Charge. But he didn't go for it last time, so I don't know that he is. Um, let's see. So he taunts. Okay, nice. So it did show, it held that till game three. That's a good thing to hide. We do miss Thunder Wave this time. Um, what can you do? Doesn't really matter, I don't think. And Arcanine gets fully parried, so kind of a, a trade-off of not doing anything for a turn, which is kind of funny. You can't set up. His Tailwind peters out, so now Sinistra is faster than Arcanine. Um, I could foul play Arcanine if that's his main source of damage at this point. But I do just think these Paras, like, that's what's going to win me the game at the end of the day. Um, I could Shadow Ball to do more damage to Tornadus, but I think Macha Gacha is just the play. So it's good of him on hiding that taunt for that long. I've only seen Bleak Wind and Tailwind out of him so far. So I guess um, it's a good move to hold in the back. Although, I guess he could have used it earlier when he saw me start setting up. I don't know. Definitely could have had his reasons. Uh, might have thought I would have just started attacking sooner. Tornado switches out. Is it? It can't be anything immune to Thunder Wave. And he does no, not have Tailwind up anymore. Politoed comes in. It's not going to appreciate a Macha Gacha. Uh, we will Thunder Wave into that slot with the Clef Key. Uh, Macha Gacha does hit both. We don't need the healing yet, but it is nice that it hits both. Uh, Arcanine might drop to one more. A foul play will definitely, but we're not going to get to see that because he Flare Blitzes our Clef Key. So... I think, funnily enough, Moltres was the correct play here. Because now we have 100% accurate uh, Hurricanes. So we can go into Moltres. Obviously, it's threatened by both of our opponent's Pokemon. I mean... I mean, Ancient Power is never the play, right? And neither is Heat Wave. It has to be Hurricane into Politoed, Macha Gacha, and... Honestly, at, th at this point, it's in Accuracy's hands again. If Machigatsa misses Arcanine at Rock Slides Moltres, uh, there's nothing we can do about it. So, at this point, it's just in the hands of Accuracy. So, he does have his Terra. Um, probably Dragon Politoed, if I had to guess. Yep, okay, nice. So, you do get to see the Politoed Terra. It will make it resist Machigatsa, but the Hurricane is still going to hurt. This is a max special attack Hurricane coming off of Moltres. Um, which is always accurate, too. Yeah, 1% one, 1 health. Oh, but it's Citrus, so it probably lives in Machigacha and gets a big water hit off. Uh, but at this point, I don't know if he has enough gas in the tank to deal with Macha, or sorry, <laughs> Sinistra. Macha Pokemon. Um, so we do land on both. We do knock out Arcanine, so that is massive. That was our biggest threat, especially with screens going down soon. He does show the muddy water. Uh, knocks Moltres down low, but... Okay, he does. He will outspeed. Sinistra does wear off the taunt. So he has a choice here. He can Tailwind to make Politoed faster, but I don't know if that's his play. He can Bleak Wind and knock out Moltres, guaranteed. I can Shadow Ball Politoed to get rid of it and make it a 1v1 versus Tornadus, but I don't know if we win that 1v1. So I'm actually going to check real quick. Um, no, we probably don't win that 1v1, unfortunately. So I will attempt to hurricane the Tornadus. And Shadow Ball the Politoed and get rid of it. 
Ah, oh, shoot. I should have Shadow Balled Tornadus. That's on me. Now Moltres gets knocked out for nothing. Oh, but he decides to taunt instead. Uh, so that was just a wasted turn on my part. And we're in the same situation we were before. We do get the Hurricane, I guess. Huge damage. But Shadow Ball goes uh, blankly into Politoed. Although, now that I'm looking at it, we know Politoed's helping hand Muddy Water. So it may just not have a move to hit Sinistra. So I think I just kind of double into it. Maybe it has Protect as its last move. Um, but if we just Hurricane Shadow Ball into the Tornado to try to get rid of it, I think Sinistra can win this endgame. Oh, and it, okay, it's slower, so it's super supportive. Um, so Hurricane knocks it out. It's nice. So Max Speed Moltres has actually paid off hugely there. We get uh, Shadow Ball into the Polytoad. Should knock it out, should win us the game. Nice. Massive plays by Sinistra. And Moltres was the rot play 100% of the time. Like Scarf, um... Tyranitar in that end game would not have went well for us. So massive. We win. <laughs> we won a game. We won week six, so we are now two and four. Uh we didn't just win off a of fluke once. We did have to work really hard for this one. But Sinisha was just the best trade we could have made. It has been the absolute MVP. Obviously our opponent brought did you see how many counters our opponent had to um Como? Two fairy terras? A ton of coverage that hits Como super effectively. And then things like Taunt to stop us from ever setting up with it. So, like, unfortunately, I picked Como in a team that was made to support it. But it doesn't support Como well enough. So, maybe it's just uh, a fluke. You know, I picked it. It was a very bad choice for a pick one, I think. I think I should have picked something that was way better on its own initially. Didn't need to set up so hard. And didn't have so many obvious counters. Um, but, you know, live and learn. We're up to 2-1. I don't think there's an opportunity for playoffs, but we're definitely going to bring it for our last games. So thank you again for watching, and we'll see you next time.